Okay, we're back talking about commas. We were talking about commas in parallel structure, and I wanted to point out that this comma here, if this is a list, she bought bread, milk, and cat food. This comma there is a controversial comma. Uh, it's called a serial comma, S-E-R-I-A-L, like things in a series, things in a list, a serial comma, or it's sometimes called an Oxford comma, not sure why. Um, but some, uh, some grammar experts say, yes, you should put a comma before the and, some say, no, you should not. We practice putting a comma there. That's what we do because we follow MLA format, Modern Language Association format. The Modern Language Association is a group of um, teachers, college professors, language um, uh, scientists, people who study languages, who get together periodically to discuss uh, problems with written and spoken uh, English and um, to create uh, rules uh, to standardize the way English is written around the world in English-speaking countries. So I call them the grammar gods. They're the grammar gods. So the grammar gods, our grammar gods, the ones that we believe in and follow, are the Modern Language Association, MLA. The reason that we use their rules rather than another set of grammar gods rules is because those that's the format that most classes in college and most professions follow. If you are studying science or math particularly, uh, you, there may be other grammar gods that you follow. But for most classes, in college and for most professions, we follow the MLA format when we write um, formal papers. Uh, so they say that we have to put a comma there, so that's the rule we learn and follow. Okay? Uh, if you want to see a big argument about it, you can go online and Google serial comma controversy or Oxford comma arguments, and you'll see big big argument among people who care about it. <laughs> um, all right, so, but we're going to remember we put a comma there. Let's go back to number four for just a moment, and let me say something about this. Um, the Grammar Gods, MLA, uh, sometime in the past decade, uh, finally decided that we are no longer going to put a comma after an introductory prepositional phrase if it's short and very clear. Okay? So, here's the example. So, look what we have here. We have a prepositional phrase at the beginning. At the dance. Many people were drunk. Right? So, at the dance is a prepositional phrase. In the past, we might have put a comma after it. At the dance, comma, many people were drunk. But at this time, for about 10 years now, the MLA, the Grammar Gods, have said, we're not going to put a comma there anymore unless we need it for the sentence to be clear or to make sense. All right? So, for example, the next uh, example says, after the movie, we went out to eat. After the movie is a prepositional phrase. If we leave the comma out, it's not confusing at all, so we're not going to put a comma there. Um, I think this is a really bad decision because generally, as we saw in the last lesson, we put a comma after introductory structures, whether they're phrases or clauses or single words. Uh, so why get rid of the comma after a prepositional phrase? I don't know. Uh, the the trend in uh, the in um, punctuation fashions is toward less fewer pieces of punctuation less punctuation if we don't need it don't use it this was very different a couple hundred years ago um, where there was a lot more punctuation typically used in writing so um, however. 
if there is more than one prepositional phrase at the beginning, or if the reader could be confused if we don't use a comma after the prepositional phrase, then we're going to go ahead and put it. So look at my third example here under number four. For many years in the hills above the town, mountain goats had grazed. So we put a comma. We have for many years is a prepositional phrase. In the hills is a prepositional phrase. Above the town is a prepositional phrase. So we have three prepositional phrases there. So since it's not just one clear one, we're going to put a comma after them. But uh, if we don't put a comma there, the reader might stumble over this and say and think that it's something like a town mountain. For many years in the hills above the town mountain, like the mountain that belongs to the town, goats had grazed. But it's not the town mountain, it's the town. And mountain modifies goats rather than town modifying mountain. So our reader might stumble over it or be confused if we don't put the comma there. So we're going to go ahead and put a comma there. But if it's one prepositional phrase and not confusing at all, no comma. And we are beginning to see questions about that on the GED and the high set because it's been long enough now that the rule, since the rule was changed, um, that uh, we begin to see uh, questions about it. All right, let's look at the exercises on the back and just try a few to make sure we know uh, what we're doing here. So uh, look at number one. He left the scene of the accident and he tried to forget about it. So if we analyze that sentence, we're going to find out that we've got two main clauses. He left the scene of the accident. He is the subject. Left is the predicate. He left the scene of the accident is a main clause because it can be a sentence by itself. Then we have another main clause. He tried to forget about it. So he is the subject. Tried to forget is the predicate. That's a main clause. He tried to forget about it. So we have he left the scene of the accident, comma, and he tried to forget about it. Sorry about the dog. So, he left the scene of the accident, comma, and he tried to forget about it. That's a compound sentence. So, we put a comma there. Um, look at number two. Madame de Stahl was an attractive, gracious, and generous lady. So, what's going on in that sentence? We have a list, right? We have a list of traits that she has. She's attractive, she's gracious, she's generous. So three descriptive words about her. So we would say, Madame de Stahl was an attractive, comma, gracious, comma, and generous lady. Okay? And then, um, let's see. Look at number six. After he had survived this ordeal, the trapper felt relieved. So if we analyze that sentence, we find we've got two clauses. The first one is, after he had survived this ordeal. He is the subject. Um, survived is the predicate. After he had survived this ordeal, what? That's a subordinate clause because it's not finished. And then, the trapper felt relieved is a main clause. Trapper is the subject. Felt is the predicate. The trapper felt relieved is a main clause because it can be a sentence by itself. So what we have is a complex sentence. After he had survived the ordeal, comma, the trapper felt relieved. Okay. Um, all right. So I think we're going to leave it there for today. You can look at the other examples there. Okay. Um, there are a couple examples there where there are introductory structures that we've talked about in the last lesson. Uh, remember that we put a comma.